ओके सो वेलकम बैक सो वी हैव बीन मेनी ऑफ अस हैव बीन वेटिंग फॉर दिस टॉक फॉर क्वाइंट क्वाइट सम टाइम एंड सो प्रेजेंटिंग टू यू the universal cryptographer the rock star <laughs> ran kennedy the ran <laughs> professor of computer science uh, boston university and tel aviv university um so he is the father of uh, universal composability security definition and we uh, the community the cryptographic community is forever grateful to him for this wonderful contribution and all of us know the importance of security definition so if we don't have the right kind of security that doesn't capture the real world attacks then the rest of the exercise that we do that is co- coming off with a construction and giving rigorous proof all is futile right you employ that those protocols in practice and everything is susceptible to the attacks because your definition is not the right one that's why we need the right definition and thank you for giving us uh the definition of course apart from universal composability he has uh, many other uh contributions let me save those for the public talk tomorrow mm-hmm. save the nice words and uh, um, today he is going to talk on something else he is going to talk on random oracles which uh, we uh, don't understand in terms of con- con- uh, constructions very much so uh, we want to use the idealized version of it and uh, this is based on uh, one of his recent work where they tried to build a construction that uh, gives the properties of random oracles and uh, just on a personal note this is an extremely uh, emotional uh, moment for me having him here in this podium and it's like a dream came true thank you for uh, making it defeating all the odds all the conspiracies of <laughs> put by indian government sorry about that yes. on behalf of the indian government and with that uh, please uh, help me welcoming uh, professor ran thank you and humble uh, thank you uh, i hope i can live up to that but the, um, so yes so i man- finally managed to get here after uh, uh, many hours of waiting in uh, on the way and you know in, as a peter said for all against all 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 attempts of the Indian government um and thanks for Peter Peter for uh, uh for helping he helping me and supporting um anyway so i want to talk today about something nothing to do with you see it'll be had some discussions about talk about i i, I decided to try to talk about this uh, uh it's it's another one of those things that i've been doing for a long time and i've been kind of like uh, uh, uh having an eye on and it's uh, there have been recent uh, exciting progress in the last uh, couple of years so you know I'll try to give some perspective um anyway so uh and I'm going to start slow cuz I understand that different uh, uh, the, the audience is is mixed so I'll try to to start slow uh I uh, hope I'm not going to bore too much anyway so so I just go to uh, crypto 101 one of the you know the basic primitives that uh, we all see in love when we uh, when we start getting acquainted with the script zoo so we have all kinds of animals you know we have one with functions maybe the most basic uh, uh, crypto animal uh, we have uh, pseudo generators so and functions block ciphers uh, uh, and then you learn about collision resistant hash functions i don't know which order uh, your professor uh, you you like to uh, to teach us things uh um and then the encryption scheme the signature schemes the you know it's protocol the bios transfer and then goes on from there right so there are, are, are all these uh, uh, animals in the zoo but there is one animal here that is really stands out from all these animals so uh if you you know see the, the topic of the talk you probably guess what it is but uh, uh so so this is really collision resistant hash functions so why are they so, so different because in some sense this is the only animal that uh, in the definition of of this animal there is no secrecy I mean there is no all these other animals you know the secrets is chosen at random that so it doesn't know the secrets is to guess learn something whatever prove but yet there is no secrecy everything is out in plain view in the open and still you assume that the other secret can not do stuff can not find collisions right so it's really something different um So let's just remind ourselves what the definition is. 
So uh, the function from uh, 0, 1 star to 0, 1 to the k is a continuous resistant hash function. Uh, if uh, no polytom adversary can find two different x's that hash to the same value. Well, remember that doesn't really work. Doesn't make sense because, of course, it's a single function. So when there are collisions, because it's many, you know, it's it's many to one. So uh, so that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the so then yeah so okay so so as it, as I wrote here it doesn't make sense but there are ways. Uh, so so yeah so you have to find that there are no uh, 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 okay so the question what is the input to the adversary which is not even defined here right That's but a, yeah it, the sure yeah yeah. Right, right. So one way to, to make it meaningful is uh, for a single function is to say that there is some security parameter involved and then adversary is supposed to output two different inputs that have uh, a large enough, you know, larger than a security parameter. Uh, uh, to, uh, and, and then the adversary itself has to be uh, short, I mean shorter, you know, than, uh, than the security parameter. There should be some, some notion of competition which is succinct uh, code and, and then polytime, yeah. Right. Uh, well, what is polytime, polyspace, whatever. Okay, you're right. So I, I'm not getting into details, but you're right. Uh, uh, so, so, so there are different ways to, to get around it. Uh, uh, I'll go, go back to single functions in a minute, but right now I want to kind of take the, the standard uh, uh, path that's taken in the crypto you know, crypto literature uh, uh, over the years is that, uh, at least in the theory world, uh, is that we move to, uh, to function families, uh, uh, so now it's not a single function; it's it's, it's a family of functions. And uh, uh, is this is this uh, 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 a pointer? Oops, no, big mistake. Uh, uh, okay, second. No, wait. It's okay. Okay, is there is there a click on no, I'll click by using my finger. Uh, okay, so 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 there is a. Uh, uh, this is, it's, it's a family of functions, uh, uh, and now uh, the uh, the adversary uh, is supposed to uh, uh, so first it's functions to show that it's random from the family, and then the adversary gets a description of the function, and and now it has to find the collision for that particular function in the family. Yeah. Uh, okay, never mind. It's okay. Okay. Oh, with what? With this one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, okay. So anyway, so so the uh, so it, it's kind of a, a, an office small large modification that allows us to talk about those things. Uh, I mean, whatever I'm going to talk about is is uh, uh, not depend too much on, on the specific formalization. Although I'm going to stick to the family uh, uh, formalization throughout. Um, and just to say that, as you felt said, that there are different ways that you can actually stick to a single uh, function. And, and still relax the formulation a bit. So one way is to talk about a uniform case, but in some sense you get some relatively weak guarantees here because you don't get about specific functions, only asymptotic. But even if you stick to specific functions, you can get guarantees either by uh, uh, you know the, the rogueway trick of uh, uh, just uh, reducing to whatever humanity can find instead of what exists, uh, uh, or there are other tricks uh, recently other, it's not tricks, it's a, it's a definitional approach that actually relaxes the, uh, the requirement. The adversary may find some collisions, but not more than its space. Uh, uh, so, uh, so there are different ways to do it, but we're going to stick with, uh, with families throughout, just to uh, 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 finish that loop. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, so, uh, and again, so this is the definition I'm going to choose. We have... For any family, uh, uh, for any, for, for a function family is collision resistance if uh, it is publicly known, and even for the, an adversary uh, that gets a full description of a function chosen at random from the family, uh, uh, it still cannot find collisions. Everything is out in plain view, and it still cannot find. And really, this is a strong definition, and, and, and we know that uh, uh, it really stands out from all. 
uh, uh, other uh, uh, other definitions of primitives. In particular, we don't have any kind of like black box constructions of collision hash functions from any other of those any of those other primitives that we have that are listed before, even ones that are considered to be much more complex, right? Uh, uh, or all current constructions are much more complex. So this is really a strange animal. Um, anyway, so, uh, so I just said. Um, okay, so great. So we have collision resistance, um, which is some property of those public hash functions. But uh, in some sense, why stop there? And just maybe just for curiosity sense, uh, say, why stop there? Uh, 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 what about other relations? Why just this specific relation of, you know, two inputs that the outputs are equal? Sure, it has particle applications, but is there something special about it? Uh, 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 so what about the plus five relation, right? Uh, uh, find two inputs such that uh, uh, the, the, the hashes of the input they differ by five. Uh, uh, is it, uh, 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 how can we do it? Is it implied by collision resistance? Does it imply collision resistance? Is a whole new other property? You know, what's, what's going on there? And you can, of course, think of uh, other relations. Uh, uh, so here's another relation. Uh, here it's only, I'm not even talking about two inputs, just one input. Uh, uh, so uh, now the adversary has to find, a, given the description of the hash function, has to find an x such that, uh, um, such that x, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, you know, the, the prefix of x is fixed to some a that, you know, that, they, that you don't control. Uh, but then the output of the hash function has to start with some t zeros, right? Uh, but the, you're supposed to output, you find such an x, okay? Does anybody recognize this, uh, this relation? Uh, uh, or the people who recognize are not here anymore, you know? That's the Bitcoin relation, right? Uh, uh, great, thanks. So, so, uh, um, so, so here is a relation on hash functions, right? And uh, uh, we've been implicitly assuming it that the hash function that we're using uh, has this uh, has this relation, uh, this property that it's hard to find such x's better than trying it random, right? But uh, um, do, do we have any guarantee that the hash functions that we're using have this property, right? We use SHA-1 or whatever other, you know, SHA-256 or whatever, but should design for something different, but, you know, the collision resistance, but does it mean that they have this property? We don't know. Uh, uh, but uh, what we can do, uh, uh, so as I said, so what are, how can we understand those properties? Can we have some better understanding or they develop some, 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 some theory that allows us to understand those, those relations better? Um, and we don't have that. And, uh, but we stand, we kind of, we do the cop out, the cop out. We just, instead, we kind of like do this uh, assumption that we kind of like, we don't even assume it's not an assumption. We just model those hash functions as the kind of super idealized uh, constructs that are completely random. They have no structure. Whereas, of course, they do, uh, uh, but uh, this is what we do. This is what we assume. Um, and uh, so it would be nice just even intellectually to try to understand to give some 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 uh, science or some understanding of what's what's going on with these relations. Um, so so here's one attempt. In fact, uh, an attempt uh, from many years ago. Um, so how about trying to write a hash function or to write the definition of the hash function that withstands the all relations, those relations, all relations, right? So uh, uh, a function family uh, is a correlation intractable. If for any polytime adversary A and any relation uh, 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 between the inputs and the outputs of the function, now it's just a binary relation, uh, uh, the adversary, given a uh, random uh, function from the family, cannot find x such that x and the h sub k of x is in the relation. Okay? Uh, great. So that would, of course, imply all the other things. So, so right now, uh, okay, so, so first I want to say that by, just by itself, it doesn't make sense because what about, what about I said well, of all relations, uh, what about relations that are oversatisfied? I don't want to worry about those. So let's talk about those relations that would not be satisfied with the random function, right? So, so I will call them evasive relations and there are relations such that for any x, the, uh, the fraction of the y's for which r of x y is uh, uh, satisfied is negligible. 
Okay, so uh, those are relations that with a random function it would be hard to find, to, to satisfy. Uh, so I want to uh, just restrict to this, uh, to, this, to these relations, which is good enough. Uh, and just to say that I wrote it now for a single input, uh, single, uh, uh, the relation just takes a single input and the function value, uh, but you can of course extend it naturally to take many inputs, right? It's so a collision resistance, you need two inputs and the outputs. Uh, um, you can think about more inputs and outputs, but this is good enough for us for now. Um, in fact, throughout the talk. Uh, so, uh, so this is a nice property. It would be nice to have such a harsh function. But uh, uh, like the story uh, uh, of those, you know, <laughs> the old guy that goes to the zoo and, you know, and, and, and sees the giraffe and then, you know, walks back and the book and looks again and see and say, no, no such animal. And uh, I know it continues walking. So, you know, in 98, we are already three old guys. And, uh, and uh, we said there is no such animal. Uh, uh, and in fact, we proved it to ourselves. Uh, and how did, how did I, and here's a simple proof. Uh, uh, so assume the real, there was such uh, 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 polytime computable uh, function family H. Uh, and, uh, and that somebody says this is correlation tractable. So how about the following relation? Kind of the, kind of the diagonalization relation, if you like. So let's uh, R sub H of X, Y. So R depends on the family. It doesn't depend on any particular function in the family. It depends on the family. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it says that uh, R sub H of X and Y holds if uh, H, H uh, sub X of X, actually this X has to be up a bit. So X is used as, uh, as a key and as input, right? Used twice. So this goes up uh, uh, equals Y. Okay, and notice that this relation is very easy for, for, because for every x is only a single y uh, uh, that satisfies it. Um, uh, so it is evasive. However, uh, uh, it's easy to, uh, to find correlations for that uh, relation. So assume, let's just consider the adversary that input k outputs the, the in, its input, which is k. So what we have is that, you know, just, you just uh, substitute, you know, so the probability over random k that a of k outputs x such that the relation holds is what? So a of k uh, outputs uh, 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 k. So what we have here is the relation that k and a sub k of k equals 1, which exactly that always holds over here. So the adversary succeeds just trivially. Right? So, so for any hash function family, there is a relation that uh, uh, depends on the family that it's easy to satisfy. Great. So, so at this point, we were happy. We said the, fam uh, ha the animal doesn't exist, and we moved on in the zoo. And, uh, but, but, uh, uh, but, but wait a second. Wait, is this, this doesn't really kill it, because what if uh, uh, we restrict the, the input size? So we just talked here about you know, inputs uh, uh, any size input, but what if we say that the input actually is of, of some restricted size, doesn't, cannot be too large, and in fact, the input is shorter than the key, the key or the description of the function, right? So, so the input now has n bits, and the key has k bits, and the description of the function is k bits, and, uh, and n is smaller than k. Then the previous attack doesn't work, right? Uh, because you cannot look, you cannot input the key to the function. The function cannot eat itself. Its own description is input, so it cannot it cannot diagonalize. Uh, so what's going on here? So we don't know. Uh, uh, so the impossibility doesn't uh, that doesn't hold, and the the problem has been open. Uh, uh, in fact, until very recently, and I must say that it, it kept bugging me throughout the years. And in fact, I think like. <laughs> Probably every graduate student that I've been working with, uh, I've been bugging them with that, with that question. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, you know, most of them, you know, brushed it away. Some, some, some tried, you know, uh, you know, they were nice to me. They tried, they didn't work, and then moved on. Right, so, and, uh, and so, so it really bugged me, but, you know, there was, we didn't have any tools, and we couldn't do it. 
uh, which in my respect looks surprising, but it is, it is what it is. Uh, uh, but the end of the talk, I think you understand what I mean. But anyway, so, so let's, let's, let me stop here and actually do a cut and, do, and move back to kind of like a, a different beginning of the talk. Uh, 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 let's put this in cash for a second and let's talk, let's actually move kind of like, t you know, uh, 10 or 12 years earlier. And maybe the, uh, uh, the uh, kind of like, you say, the original sin, if you want. Uh, um, so, so, uh, uh, so 1986, uh, uh, many things happened in, in, in 86. You know, Jim W1 just came out uh, uh, that, you know, NP is in zero knowledge. Uh, uh, Jim W2 was not out yet. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but then Fiat and Shabir had this uh, 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 a, a cool idea, which is the following. So they had a way to take a, 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 an interactive identification scheme and make it non-interactive. And, uh, uh, and how did they do that? Uh, um, so, so let me just give you kind of a, 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 a whatever. Uh, they did it based on factoring, but, uh, or RSA, but uh, uh, actually factoring, but uh, let's, uh, uh, let me do a discrete log based analog because it's simple, simpler for me to talk about. Uh, uh, so let's, talk, let's see how they have a three round protocol. So, uh, uh, so public parameter, there's a public uh, uh, group G and a generator small g and some random element r and uh, uh, the, the, there's a secret the prover has a secret key p uh, that only the prover knows and there is a public key which is uh, capital g which is uh, g the generator to the p and capital r which is r to the p uh, and then to uh, to identify itself uh, the prover assigns to the verifier first uh, uh, g to the s and r to the s for a random s that it chose and then the verifier sends the challenge C, which is random in the group. And then the prover sends this the following uh, 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 formula, exponent S plus CP. And this allows the verifier to check uh, 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 two different checks and the two different exponents. And, uh, uh, and, and it holds uh, 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 only if uh, uh, the, you know, the prover knows the, this P. So we have uh, completeness, we have soundness, and we have uh, Alan's verifies the knowledge for this for this protocol. Um, great, uh, but it's a three-round uh, protocol, and, and, and Fiat and Jumeir had they thought how to make it non-interactive. So the question, you know, you want to move interaction just one message, you want to make it into a signature, an identification scheme. You know, it's very nice to have something non-interactive. You can post it, uh, uh, you can forward it, uh, uh, much much easier. The prover doesn't need to talk with every verifier uh, 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 specifically. You know, just one proof and that's it. Uh, so how to make it an, uh, an interactive? So, so one, you know, naive idea is maybe you let uh, the prover choose the C, the challenge C by, by, by yourself. Great. Uh, uh, but uh, this, of course, will not be sound because uh, the cheating prover may choose C depending on, 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 on R and, and R prime and, and G prime that it sent. So sign goes away. So, so what do we do? So, uh, so what do we kind of constrain uh, how the prover chooses C? In particular, uh, the idea was to actually choose some, some complex enough uh, hash function, H, and, uh, and have the prover choose to just to make sure that the prover doesn't choose G prime and R prime uh, based on uh, a C, actually you're going to have to choose C as a function of G prime and R prime, right? So, uh, uh, so in particular, uh, uh, the uh, uh, C is going to be a hash of the GNR, which is the public key, uh, key of, the, of the prover, and the, and, and the, uh, the first uh, message. Uh, uh, and then the prover just uh, computes the hash itself, C the challenge itself, answers it, and just sends the whole thing in one message. The, uh, uh, the first message and the third message, the second message is implicit. Um, so, so what do we have with this protocol, right? So this is just one message. So we have completeness and uh, zero knowledge, we didn't argue, but uh, it should be okay uh, because in some sense, the verifier learns even less uh, um, because it has less choice uh, intuitively. But the question is soundness, is this sound? Uh, uh, that's the fact that the prover had to choose the challenge in a specific way doesn't uh, imply soundness. So that was a good question. 
uh, so in other words, it's R, sorry, it's not R, it's H, uh, 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 what property should H uh, satisfy? Uh, uh, so of course, the satisfy the property is that the protocol remains sound, so that's the property that H satisfy, duh, but, but is there kind of a more, a better reason, is there like in some intrinsic simple property, a nice property that, uh, uh, that uh, this H should satisfy? Sorry, this R keeps coming in. Uh, hopefully this is the last time. Uh, um, so, so Fiat Shumir actually argued informally in the paper. It actually said that in the full version they're going to prove it when I was in '86. So, uh, I, ten years later, Paul Chavall and Stern gave the full version and actually proved it that it remained sound. Uh, uh, that if R is a random function, it's not the Oracle. Uh, but then the question remains. Uh, 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 so what about uh, 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 efficiently computable H's, uh, uh, not uh, uh, random H's? And this has been uh, 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 kind of left, left up in the air. Um, so, so here is, if you look at the, at, at the paper, the future new paper, uh, uh, what they say is that uh, uh, they, they propose to use uh, uh, pseudo functions uh, uh, or... Uh, 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 because those are functions that just came out a year before, uh, 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 that should be indistinguishable from random functions. Uh, um, in particular, they say that maybe you can use DES or triple or multiple DES instead of a function uh, uh, and without endangering the security of the scheme. So, so I remember reading it many years ago, and I was smiling to myself, well, these guys don't understand the difference between, you know, pseudo a function with a key secret and, and random oracle or random function with the keys public, what are they talking about? But so this missed, but we'll get to this in a minute. I put it here for a reason. But anyway, so so there wasn't really any particular reason. Uh, uh, at least the dot that I that I saw. Uh, but just to say that more generally this transform kind of like is really really attractive. And you can you can you can apply it not to just of course three round protocols, you can apply it to more rounds. And you can take any public coin interactive protocol and make it into a non-interactive argument. And uh, uh, in this uh, way, and the question is, is it sound? So is it sound? So in the random Oracle model, it, when it becomes multi-round, it's not so trivial that it always sound even in the random Oracle model. Uh, but if there is some specific uh, soundness property, then it actually works. Actually, it's been proven only very recently, if you see. Uh, but it does work. Uh, uh, for constant round, it works much easier. For non-constant round, you need this special property of round by round. So I'm not going to say mind what it is. Um, but again, there is a challenge remain. What happens if this is a, a officially computable function? Um, okay. So one observation that uh, happens so much is at some point. Uh, uh, this is the first time it actually appeared in writing. And they're kind of like now combining the two uh, uh, storylines of collage tractability and Fiat-Chemir is that uh, uh, if, if a hash function family is collage intractable for all uh, uh, sparse relations, uh, then it is uh, uh, Fiat-Chemir compatible. I mean, it actually is, is good enough for Fiat-Chemir, right? So maybe it sounds like good news, uh, uh, but uh, uh, we'll see in a, in a minute uh, where it leads. So let's just see uh, 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 the argument. Uh, so let's just do it for three messages. It works for any constant rounds. Uh, so we have this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, public or interactive proof. Alpha, beta is a random challenge, and gamma is the answer. Uh, and this is a proof. And now we turned it into this argument where the verifier just sends the hash function, or it's, it's fixed in the sky. And then it's just alpha and gamma, where the beta is implicit. And uh, so, uh, so why is this uh, 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 sound? So let's consider the following relation. Uh, uh, so it's all the alphas and betas, alphas and betas, such that there exists a gamma that the verifier accepts, you know, x alpha beta gamma, right? So obviously, uh, uh, if the protocol is, uh, if, if, if the protocol was sound to begin with, with the proof to begin with, then this relation has to be sparse, right? Because uh, uh, if it wasn't sparse, uh, that means that uh, 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 there was some alpha for which there were significantly many betas for which there existed a gamma, 
then the, the prover, the cheating prover, will of course would have sent this alpha, was gotten the good beta, and then would have found the gamma, right? Uh, um, so, uh, uh, so, so that means that uh, uh, if the proof is sound to begin with, then this relation is sparse, right? This relation is not efficiently computable. First, because the prover may not be uh, for poly time, uh, but even if it was, it, it didn't really help because we, they're talking about there the exists gamma, and it's not really hard to find this gamma uh, 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 for, for every for every beta. But never mind. So so uh, um, so, uh, but but if we don't care about uh, uh, the time to to compute the, the relation, then we're good. So the question is: This uh, good news or bad news for future, you know, for for uh, for you know for collection trackable functions? Right? Remember, I said that you know we're trying to, to construct. We couldn't. Now we have an application. Uh, uh, but is this good or bad? So so generally, if you have an application with something, it's bad news for constructing it. You know, could could make it only harder. And indeed, in that case, uh, uh, it did make make it at least sound harder to construct because there are all kinds of those accumulating evidence over the years that those these uh, future mere functions are kind of could be hard to construct uh, uh, so first there's this uh, bad news uh, general bad news that the random oracle methodology is unsound that was the original reasons why we defined this uh, uh, college trackable but never mind we didn't really need it we could prove it much simpler without it but it was a cool thing to define anyway so uh, uh, so uh, uh, so this is one general bad news um, so there's more specific bad news, you know, there's the, ma the notion of magic functions, the, the magic functions paper by Wachnauer and Reingold and Stockmeyer that they show essentially if, if there exists, if, if future mere functions, then there is no three round public coin uh, zero knowledge protocol, uh, which is uh, kind of like something that we, we didn't know if yes or no, or, or at least of some sort, uh, uh, but it sounded like there might be an you know, showing that it they don't they don't exist, it sounds like a high order. Um, bad news number three. Uh, 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 so they actually, they, they are, they, you know, three rounds. They exist arguments that are three rounds that Fiatrimi doesn't work for those arguments, those proofs with arguments and specific uh, arguments. Uh, so that was another piece of bad news. That was another bad news that actually. Uh, 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 you cannot prove the soundness of FHME paradigm using, uh, you know, black box reduction to standard assumptions. Uh, 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 the, the actual formalization of this result is kind of a bit uh, delicate, but uh, uh, but this was the general message. You know, it's just it's not something that you can do by standard reduction to to uh, uh, to a standard assumption. Um, to to uh, but. Um, um, but anyway, so, so this kind of like starts saying this future mere functions are kind of maybe out there, maybe we can't really construct them, which means maybe uh, correlation trackable functions are going to be hard to construct. So it looks uh, kind of bleak. Uh, let's not go there. So, it's, uh, so there are all kinds of delicate issues there, but it, it, the parameters and stuff. It, it's not just a gentle mix, but never mind. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. But, uh, anyway, so, but uh, there, there is a, a, a kind of light in the end of the tunnel, you know, so, uh, and that's, you know, start with program obfuscation. So, I don't know, I, I'm not sure how much people talked about it in this, in this, in this, uh, this week, not at all. So, I just said, let's just like give a very high level. I'm not going to go any level of detail here, but just high level reminder of what this thing is. So, so, so what's program obfuscation? It's a, it's, it's a general compiler. It takes into programs to, you know, compiles them into a different a way to write the programs, which keeps functionality of the program uh, uh, and, you know, maybe uh, expands them a bit, but not too much. Uh, and the point is that the obfuscated program hides everything that you can hide about the program, uh, you know, while keep it fun keep, keeping functionality. So there is a strong variety of obfuscation, which is called virtual black box. Uh, uh, which says that essentially interacting with the program now is, is, is essentially like interacting with an oracle to the program. So you have no idea about either the structure of the program or about the output of the program and other input that you didn't explicitly ask, right? Uh, uh, and that's a very strong property, which in general is impossible. 
uh, uh, and uh, there's, there's a weaker notion of obfuscation that's called indistinguishability obfuscation. The only thing that it says is that for every two programs that are functionally equivalent, actually they have the same functionality on all inputs and they have the same size, uh, the obfuscated versions of the two programs are indistinguishable. Right? So, so in some sense, the I.O. doesn't uh, uh, um, hide the functionality of the program at all, right? Uh, um, but it hides the implementation, right? For any two programs to have exactly the same functionality, the implementation is, is the same, in, indistinguishable. So we have BF candidates, uh, uh, and uh, you know, uh, some people, including myself, believe that it should be doable from standard assumptions, but we're still not there yet. We are kind of like some way on the way, uh, uh, maybe one day. Uh, uh, but uh, it's something that it's not a fine. It well, it sounds like it's not a fine in the sky. Uh, uh, anyway, so, but it's a nice concept, and regardless. So why I'm saying that obfuscation is, uh, is, uh, 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 is kind of like in, to the rescue here, uh, uh, because you know, remember that we talk about uh, 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 so random functions look like random function as long as you have a secret key, but you need a secret key as long as the adversary doesn't see a secret key. Uh, uh, so what if you take a random function family, you choose a, 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 a function random from the family, and now you obfuscate it, right? Uh, uh, and this is your uh, this is your hash function, right? So intuitively, it sounds like you know. Since the key is hidden inside, and uh, and uh, this obfuscation hides all the implementation details, so it look, should look like should, should look like a random function, right? It should have all the properties that a random function would have. In particular, it should be a good feature of function, call it extractable, etc. Right? Uh, uh, but you know, very good intuition, but how to prove it? Right? And it, it's not clear. So so again, for from virtual black box looks kind of like almost immediate that it should work, but it's too strong. We know we can construct those things, which again, kind of, kind of seems to resonate with the general impossibility of those things. But what about uh, if you just do I.O.? So it's been around, you know, so it's listed what in my mind and been sure in many other people's mind for a while, ever since I.O. Uh, came, you know, uh, came to people's attention, but it took a while to actually make it work. Uh, but, uh, but, but, you know, maybe the first result that, that actually makes it work is the following. Uh, uh, so assume we assume sub-exponentially secure I.O. and punctual PRFs, which are PRFs of some specific property, never mind what it is, if you're not familiar, thinks GGM PRFs, it's good enough. Uh, and we have uh, also input hiding obfuscation, which is, never mind again, it's another variant of obfuscation. We can construct correlation trackable functions for bounded relations, relations which are bounded by some fixed polynomial. Right. Um, and the construction is, 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 is of a scale, IO of a PRF, of a punctual PRF. So what, 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 what you would think. So I must say that, you know, you know when Yile walked to my office one day in 2015 and with the idea for proof, I kind of smiled, almost threw them out of my office because, you know, but, uh, but, uh, but then they convinced me that it works and, and it does work. And, and, and the proof is, uh, is kind of cute. Uh, um, and you'll see the idea later on also. So, so assume there was some adversary, just at the high level, assume there was some adversary in a relation uh, uh, such that the adversary uh, could actually break uh, 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 the college tractability with respect to this relation, right? So the, uh, uh, the key is an I.O. Of, uh, uh, of a function from a family, from a uh, uh, function of sort of a family. And then the adversary, given the key, outputs an X such that X and F of A of, F A of X, the obfuscated version, never mind, it's, the function is the same, uh, uh, the relation is one, right? Uh, and this probability is, is, is not negligible. Right, so assume there's an adversary that does that, then what do we do? We kind of play games with this adversary. Instead of uh, 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 giving him uh, 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 such a, an honestly generated key, we give him a key that was generated in some funny way, such that uh, we, we construct this uh, uh, other sort of function, other function family, which is pseudo-random, 
but has this property that uh, that particular relation is never satisfied for that uh, 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 for that function family, right? Because you just construct it this way. Because so you just check when you compute the uh, the function, you have the relation already in your mind, you know, like in your belly, and you check if it has so happens that you know the output, uh, the input has sent the relation. If yes, then you do something different. Say you have a stack of certain function keys, and you go to the next key. And if this work doesn't work again, you go to the next key. And you can show that with high probability, you won't need to go too far. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and the point is that since uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the whole thing is obfuscated, the adversary cannot tell whether what he has is the real function family or the one you concocted for it. And since the adversary cannot, definitely cannot find the relation for the concocted one, uh, it can, then it cannot find for, for the real one either, right? So that's the idea. There are more complications there, but that's, that's the idea. Um, great. Uh, but there's a limitation here, right? Because uh, now this uh, hash function can only work for relations that are less complex uh, than, than itself, right? Because the hash function has to compute the relation that it goes, right? So, so it cannot be, uh, uh, it has to be more complex than a relation. So, so in particular, the relation has to be bounded. It cannot be uh, any relation. Uh, so there is no Fiat Shamir yet. So it's it's great idea. It's a cool idea. You know, it can work for uh, uh, the uh, the Bitcoin relation uh, uh, or the family of relations, but not for uh, Fiat Shamir. Um, so not for Fiat. Uh, then there was another work, almost the same, I think it was actually independent, but just came out a bit later. Uh, 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 they showed that, now assuming, uh, 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 not sub-exponentially, but exponentially secure IO, kind of optimally secure IO, and punctual PFs, and another animal, which is coin point obfuscation, as I saw in a minute, you can actually co construct correlation tractable functions for all relations, not just bounded relations. Right, so the, the assumptions are stronger because it's really a required exponential security you know, IO, which is kind of almost perfect IO. Uh, uh, and, but, and, but then they get all relations. But the construction is the same, natural construction, IO of a PRF, of a punctual PRF. But the proof here is, 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 is different. In fact, it's uh, uh, very different. But let me try to go through the idea of the proof. And again, we'll see how this uh, uh, propagates. Uh, um, so, so what is the idea of the proof there? Uh, so, how am I doing the time, by the way? Uh, so I still have time here. Okay, I'm good. Um, okay so, so, um, so, so how does the proof go? Uh, so just to, I, I need to show you what point of obfuscation is, so it's gonna be come up in the proof. So uh, uh, it's not that hard, don't get lost. Uh, uh, so, so I'm talking about point of of x and y here, and uh, um, and and the point of it takes two values x and y and outputs an obfuscated function which I'm going to call i x y, such that this function on input x outputs y, right? Uh, uh, and but on other inputs outputs actually bottom should be not zero. Okay, so, so it lets you know whether you got the right x, and if you got the right x, you get the, you know, the key y, or whatever, this the secret key, y hidden inside. Um, so, uh, so this point of application is like an encryption of y, and we'll talk about this encryption later, but, uh, but this is what it is. And, and the point is that's the functionality, and the security is, is that for any distribution on x and y that is kind of well spread, uh, uh, the, prob the, the, the high enough in entropy, the probability over D, well, when X is chosen from D, sorry, it's uh, X and Y chosen for D, not X, uh, uh, the, the adversary, when he gets this point of obfuscation, outputs X or outputs Y, it doesn't matter, is negligible, right? So uh, as soon as the X and Y are chosen from a uh, well-spread distribution. Uh, so, Okay, so we have point of obfuscation. Now let's do the proof. Assume that you have an adversary, again, in a relation such that, as before, the adversary manages to, uh, uh, to find inputs that stand in the relation with the function, with the, you know, this external function. Uh, um, so, and then I want to say that uh, uh, um, 
this relation, now it can be any relation, but I want to add this other uh, restriction, is that there exists some Xs, and well, actually significantly many Xs, that don't have any Y that satisfies them. Why this is going to be important, you see in a minute. Uh, uh, which make, well, makes the problem even harder, right? But never mind. Um, okay, so uh, um, so now assume that they have such a, a, such an adversary that can break the college tractability of, of of the function. Uh, then uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, uh, break point obfuscation. Uh, uh, for any for for, for any for, for which distribution. A distribution that will be uh, the following, uh, um, so that it is uh, uh, it is uniform around all the pairs x and y, uh, such that uh, either x uh, i equals one, or if the x is one of those special x's that don't have any y's, then just uh, x equals y, so r x x, right? Um, now, given uh, um, uh, so, now, so this is a distribution, and now this adversary is given uh, his challenge i x y needs to find x, right? Uh, uh, so it's going to use so actually this is a different a, right? It needs to use the uh, the a for the for the point obfuscation. So uh, it actually uh, uh, gives a key to the uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know the the the, uh, the key that it gives to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the correlation tractability adversary is going to be an IO again not of f of a but another f which is slightly different than f of a and what does f prime do it actually has this uh, i of x y in its belly and it checks to given an input z uh, uh, if uh, uh, i x y of z is uh, is not null if it is uh, not null then it outputs whatever this guy outputs the y right if it is now, then it just runs the original Solano function, right? It just again hides, you know, uh, 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 embeds this i x y inside the Solano function. And again, you use the fact that it's obfuscated to say that the adversary, the the college tractability adversary, cannot tell the difference. So this now this college tractability adversary cannot distinguish. So it outputs some x prime such that uh, uh, the relation is one. But the point is that now this x prime uh, is going to be equal to the x which is in the challenge here, this x inside the, the y, with the probability which is slightly better than, actually it's 1 over, so it's 1 over 1 over 1 over epsilon times 2 to the minus m. That means the probability which is slightly higher than the trivial probability of 2 to the minus m of one here. That's because of this, uh, uh, this null excess. And never mind details, it's actually going to be clarified in a minute, the details. But uh, the point is that here you actually get some advantage. Uh, 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 and, and the adversary now used to uh, manage to use the correlation tractability adversary in order to find the, uh, uh, the x, which is standard, you know, the, 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 break, the, uh, the point obfuscation slightly better than exhaustive search. Uh, and this like advantage is enough according to our assumptions, right? So this is kind of a very tiny uh, advantage, but it's good enough in order to break the assumption. And, uh, and the point is that here I didn't care about the relation because uh, nobody had to compute the relation. It just like sits there, you know, it, it's coming inside this I, and nobody really had to compute the relation. So the relation can be anything. Um, and uh, the, 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 uh, uh, and the conclusion from that, that this actually is a good fiat Schmidt function. So we actually managed to actually construct, you know, for the first time, not we, but they uh, uh, managed to construct uh, a good fiat uh function uh, uh, from very strong assumptions, but assumptions that could potentially be true. And uh, uh, they seem to have nothing to do. And, uh, you know, it's a fixed function family that works for all, for all uh, 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 arguments, right? Doesn't depend on the argument, the family, the language, or whatever. So, kind of like, okay, we slay the dragon, you know, a little bit, but it's still just the beginning, right? Because it's a very strong assumption. So, but here, from here, actually, things started to move fast. Uh, um, so, the first thing is that after some, some uh, thinking and, 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 and thinking again, and think harder, try to simplify stuff, actually, it turns out obfuscation is not needed here. 
was very nice for th thinking about those things and for conceptualizing in the, the, the first step. But actually, you know, in the be beginning, it seemed like inherent because you need to like, be able to, you know, hide what you're doing inside the and obfuscation is, 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 it gives you the way to do it. But in fact, it's not. And in fact, what's going on there, the essence of what gives you the security there is the fact that this uh, point of obfuscation there is essentially an encryption scheme which is, uh, uh, gives you circular security. Uh, because the X and the Y are kind of chosen together, so it gives you kind of like a uh, key-dependent security. So I just to remind you what is a uh, uh, key-dependent security of encryption schemes, sorry. Uh, whoops. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so encryption scheme, encryption decryption, symmetric encryption scheme, uh, no public key. Uh, uh, it is it, it's exponentially key dependency here against uh, 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 the polytime attacks. That means that for, only, for, for all polytime adversaries A and all dependency functions D, uh, uh, dependency functions, the, the way the key depends, the message depends on the key. The probability, now the experiment is you choose a random key uh, and uh, you encrypt uh, 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 with the key D of K, which is this uh, uh, message which depends on the key in this particular way. You encrypt it and you give this to the adversary. Now you ask it to find K. And uh, you want to say the probability that the adversary does it is no more than, uh, 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 you know, if, you know, to do it just by exhaustive search, would have been one over two to the N and just trying all the key one by one and trying one key and trying to see if it works. But uh, uh, if it's polynomial time, that would say you can do it polynomially many times. So this is what you're allowed, only to have polynomial. Essentially what you're allowed to do is you can do polynomially many trials of random keys, essentially. Uh, uh, so this is what, uh, uh, this is what you're, you're allowed. Um, so this is what it means for a function for an encryption scheme to be exponentially key dependent secure against poly time attacks, right? So so it's important here that the attacker is phenomenal time, but the, the advantage is exponentially secure is, is small, right? So there is you'll see in a minute where it comes in. Um, okay. So uh, um, so here's a theorem, actually a slightly more uh, refined uh, theorem. Actually, uh, here I switched to patient for some reason. Sorry, from it's it's, it's f instead of d. But let's, uh, let's say again, it's an encryption scheme. That uh, here I, I, I say that it's a key dependency here against a specific dependency function. But before it was d, now it's f. Sorry. Uh, uh, and if if the, if you have an encryption scheme that is key dependent secure for this specific uh, function f, then uh, uh, um, the following hash function is going to be correlation tractable with respect to the relation x f of x equals 1. Right, so what is the function? It's very simple, but kind of counterintuitive. So, so uh, 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 the key of the function is a ciphertext. Right? You choose at random a random ciphertext. It's just a random ciphertext. And the function says, you know, uh, uh, take an input x, use the x, the input, as a key, and decrypt the ciphertext with that key. And what you get is your function value. It looks completely, you know, garbage. Why would you get anything meaningful from that, right? Because you, you have a ciphertext, random ciphertext, and you take your input, which is malicious, stick it as a key, and uh, decrypt. Uh, uh, why does this have to do with anything? Uh, uh, but it turns out that this is exactly what, 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 what works, right? That if the encryption scheme is key-dependent secure, then this is a uh, 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 correlation tractable, right? And now what this means is, is that this theorem works for every uh, relation by itself, every function by itself. And what it means that if you do KDM security for all F, or for all D from the previous slide, then you get correlation tractability for all R, which implies PHMU. Okay? So all you need is a strong enough encryption scheme, right? Uh, so for instance, you can assume uh, uh, that uh, uh, the DFM and the Gamal has this property, right? 
uh, uh, well, it's not in any group because there is this uh, uh, all kinds of different you know uh, uh, ways to attack in specific groups. But if you assume that you know an elliptic curve group of prime order, then there's no attacks better than the actual exhaustive search attacks. Uh, uh, then you actually get uh, uh, what you want: this uh, this optimal security for polynomial time attackers. If the attacker is uh, 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 so, you know, somebody will maybe jump and ask, you know, what about polar draw, right? It gives you squared of n uh, speed up, right? You all learned about it. True, but polar draw to get even to start getting advantage, you have to start. You have to run time squared of the, this group size. So polynomial type algorithms cannot kind of take advantage of that, right? They, maybe they get a little bit of speed up, but it still remains polynomial. So that's why. The fact that it's only exponentially small advantage against polynomial time adversaries makes this reasonable, or not unreasonable on the face of it. Uh, so this is uh, one thing that, uh, uh, that you can do. Uh, sorry, uh, they said, the another thing that you can do, well, you take a regular encryption, and uh, also you have the encryption, right? So here the decryption is just like there is a secret, uh, there is a matrix which is a secret key. Uh, uh, Sorry, it's, it's a ciphertext, and uh, X is the uh, uh, is the secret key. And it's, well, maybe I fixed, I missed it up, messed it up. But anyway, but, but what you do is just decryption uh, uh, of, of the random ciphertext with the secret key, which is your message. And again, uh, uh, LWE uh, uh, there are sub exponential attacks, but you need to be uh, uh, to run for time one polynomial to take advantage of it. So this assumption that Phenomenal time attackers can only get uh, 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 this type of advantage is uh, still, you know, it's not false uh, unless there is new uh, uh, advance in, you know, crypto analysis. So, uh, um, so you can actually, so all you need in, in, in a sense is encryption scheme or that is symmetric encryption scheme, which is enough, strong, strong enough, circular secure, which goes back to, uh, to the Fiat Shamir, back to 86. You know, but, the, but, but you know, what I said earlier that it sounded like you don't know what they're talking about, but you go uh, half a page later and they actually have a specific advantage, as a suggestion, is that uh, the, the, this f is sufficiently strong, that's the fiat uh, function. In particular, take this uh, with a fixed clear text uh, uh, and, uh, and a variable key, right? So that means the key is your input, and the, uh, here it's the plain text, right? And it's encryption, it's not decryption, but you know that for this is the same thing. So, so essentially, they suggested exactly that. Uh, uh, so, so, so really, they had the right idea, uh, but uh, we kind of rediscovered it maybe 30 or 40 years later, uh, uh, but uh, with, 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 a, with, with a proof. Um, anyway, so that's... Uh, uh, so, 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 so that's... Uh, uh, so that's that step, but it's not. It didn't end here. Um, so, so one next step is you know. So far, we are at a stage we need optimal, secular, secure. You know, key dependent message for any relation. Um, but uh, uh, we can go. You know, we, we can remove this uh, any function or any any relation uh, uh, from the equation if we use f of g. In fact, we know that uh, uh, there are ways, you know, the, 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 the homomorphic encryption gives you key dependency security. There are some people in the room that did work on that, uh, uh, which are not talking to other people, but uh, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so, 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 so here's the idea. So uh, uh, the, again, the, uh, the, uh, the hash function uh, against the, the, the key is a ciphertext and the input is a key. And uh, the way you compute it, you just decrypt uh, the ciphertext with your key as the input. Um, and the key is, is, uh, is a short, uh, as we say, uh, uh, LWE secrets. You know, for that's for, uh, for FHE that is uh, based on LWE. Uh, uh, and the decryption is essentially, uh, is same as I said before, it's bigger encryption, uh, uh, which we know is efficient. Um, and, and see the ciphertext in this case can be just a uniformly random string, right? So, uh, uh, which corresponds to regular ciphertext with high noise, but never mind, it would work just the same. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, so, so again, what we have here 
is a, a, is a hash function where uh, the, you know, the, the key is a ciphertext and you decrypt it uh, with Regev, but in the mental experiment, which you do in your mind, uh, uh, you do instead of Regev, what if I do, uh, 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 if I did FHE, and, um, and, you, and you see, but you, but you show that the corresponding encryption scheme is, again, opti optimally KDM secure for polysized functions in this case, not arbitrary functions, but polysized functions, uh, uh, if uh, 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 the, FH, the FHC scheme is optimally secure again. Uh, and, the, and the reduction is really the same uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as previous work uh, 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 of Yuval and friends on, uh, on uh, uh, doing KDF security from, from home of encryption. Uh, okay, so, so, so we can get rid of that and we can actually do more. Uh, the the uh, further result that came, came after that, so you can actually do uh, uh, succinct arguments. So that's actually, you know, the first time that actually you can use this thing uh, we, in the context of succinct arguments where the, the, the proof or the, the entire interaction is much uh, uh, shorter than, uh, uh, say, the witness, uh, uh, than just transmitting the witness. So you get succinctness. Uh, um, and the way to do it is to do Fiat Shamir for this interactive protocol of, of Goldvar, Sekalai, and Rodblum uh, uh, for, for NC. They can bootstrap from that. And uh, just doing it, it's not so trivial because, uh, uh, you know, there's things to, 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 uh, to get across. But let me just say uh, what you get. So you get. First, you get adaptive soundness, which is something which is, uh, is, uh, people worked hard to get with stronger assumptions. Or not and a stronger, but different assumptions. And the, and the reference string is uniform. There is no secret hidden in the reference string. Which actually, by the way, it's actually it's a point that I kind of I didn't talk along the way. But there is an issue when you talk about hash functions, whether the key, the inscription of the hash, is just a random string as I defined at the beginning, or there are secrets involved in the generation of the key, which of course makes make a difference. All the obfuscation-based constructions, the key is not random, right? So you actually have secrets. You have to keep secret while as you uh, as you compute. So it's like not such so so nice. But when you go back to this uh, uh, to this uh, uh, KDM formulation, all you need is a random ciphertext, which it's not always not inherently the case. But in most schemes that we know, a random ciphertext can be just a random string. So you don't really need any secrets in generation of the of the key again. Um, anyway, so uh, and it's the same here. Um, and um, anyway, so so another uh, uh, another um, uh, result that you can get from here, and actually get non-interactive zero knowledge for all of NP in, in a very different way that what we knew how to do non-interactive non zero knowledge. I mean, we do it; we know how to do it in the random Oracle model, but not in real life. Uh, uh, and uh, now we can actually do it, assuming that. Uh, uh, that search in W is optimally hard, uh, um, and uh, and again we can just do a feature mirror for you know almost any sigma protocol of GW eighty nine here three methods of graphical reliability or Hamiltonicity or uh, 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 any of those ones. Uh, so you can actually uh, uh, use it, but again you're in the realm of optimal hardness. I mean you know exponential hardness against for normal time adversaries. Um, and here we can actually get, you know, both statistical zero knowledge and adapt, uh, you know, and, and computational zero knowledge, uh, depending and, and statistical and, and proof or argument uh, 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 as you want. Which actually is interesting because if you do feature me in the random Oracle model, you always end up with an argument. You never end up in a proof. But here you can actually start with the proof and flatten it and end in the proof, uh, 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 which is nice. Uh, so actually get slightly more than with the random Morphe model. Um, anyway, so the point is that we can do everything unless uh, uh, somebody comes up with a new uh, cryptanalysis against uh, uh, LWE or one of the uh, 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 assumptions that we use. Um, okay. Uh, 
so but you know it's not it's not the end of it yet so the, okay so that way you know let me skip that i think uh, uh people may be getting tired and uh it's technical but i want to skip to the so it's kind of way how it talks about how to do what i said now but let me move to this one because this is i think something nice uh, and and the question here is you know so far we're just in the realm of exponential security we kind of we still uh, we have real functions, but the assumptions are really, really strong. Uh, can we actually go go down? I mean, can we go? Can we go to put normal assumptions? Normal assumptions, um, and uh, uh, and it turns out that you can. It's really surprising, but you can, uh, um, and you can do it with plain, uh, uh, almost plain uh, uh, FHE. Well, now we can do it actually with plain FHE, uh, uh, but here with this result, you can do it with circular FHE which is uh, 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 fully homomorphic encryption, which remains secure even when the adversary knows an encryption of the secret key, right? And, uh, and the point is that encryption of secret key, that in all the FHE schemes that we know today uh, uh, actually have this property, right? Uh, uh, but um, we, wanted, uh, uh, we wanted to do it generically, so we can. Um, so, well, the, the belief to do it, we don't, we don't know that we, they have it from LWE, but uh, we, they are assumed to have it. So anyway, so the theorem is, is that uh, assuming uh, uh, that there is uh, FHE, which is, uh, 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 which is circular secure, there is uh, a correlation uh, intractable hash family for all bounded size functions. Um, and uh, uh, this bound actually is going to be, uh, uh, is, this is going to be enough in order to get us uh, uh, things like non-interactive zero knowledge, um, which we'll get in a minute. But, uh, so, so let, but let me actually talk about how you prove that, because I think this is a cool idea. It shows the strength of, of FHE. So, so again, I, I, I'm assuming, assuming FHE with uh, uh, circular security, but just standard FHE for normal FHE, no exponential hardness. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and this still is going to be enough. And the key idea here uh, uh, is going to have correlation trackable functions for, uh, uh, for, for relations which are, uh, come out of efficient functions. So what are these going to be? So I'm going to talk about relations uh, that of, the, of, that, of that form. That for any x, there is a single y that is in the relation. And that y is efficiently computable for max. Okay? So that is the relations I'm going to work with. And that's going to be enough for me to do what I want. Uh, because in applications, uh, I can make it be the case. So these are the relations. Okay? So right now I'm talking about a uh, relation uh, uh, where this is the case. And... And this is just for functions, and, and I'm also going to have to put some bound on the complexity of the function. Uh, and you'll see in a minute why. Um, so how, how I'm going to do it. So here's, here's the construction. Um, so, you know, so uh, just observation, uh, which it's kind of, it's going to be reminiscent of the ideas we used before, but uh, I kind of explained better here. So for any function S, the, hash, the, the specific hash function such that uh, on input X output, you know, F of X plus one is obviously correlation tractable for, for F, right? Just by definition, uh, it always disagrees with F uh, uh, on any X. So it's just like perfectly correlation tractable for F. Uh, uh, so, it's, so it's easy to come up with correlation tractable function for a specific F. Uh, uh, what we want is a secret hash function that works for all f, right? So that's the, that's the hard part in this case. Uh, uh, so uh, so what we want is is is, is we're going to achieve something slightly more. Uh, is going to we're going to have a, a, a hash function and that more than it just correlation tractable for all f is actually somewhere statistical correlation tractable. That means that. Uh, uh, there is a, a way to generate the key, which is the honest way. And there is uh, another way to generate the key for every F to, to kind of like the, uh, the, the statistical way. And that key is going to be statistically correlation tractable for that particular F. And they're going to be indistinguishable, right? Uh, and, uh, uh, 
and, and since we have that, you know, for the function for the for the statistical key, uh, uh, you cannot find solutions. That means that uh, uh, for the, the the honest key, you also cannot find solutions. Otherwise, you could distinguish. Okay, so uh, um, so that means that uh, uh, that actually does the trick. So 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 we, we, all we need is to to come up with these two ways of generating keys. One which is the the, the normal one, and one which is the the, the mental experiment one, and it should be distinguished from each other. And the tool we're going to use to do it here is just plain FHE, uh, uh, again with circular security, and it's taking the same ideas that we've been talking about for the last hour, but just doing it uh, straightforward from just uh, uh, FHE. So, so remember that what's FHE, just remind you what the animal is. So you start with input X, with a pub, you, you have a public key, you encrypt, you get an encryption of X, which I denote with a red box, right? And then you do eval of some function F. Again, you have the public key and the function F, you do eval, you get encryption of F of X. And then you have a secret key, you decrypt, you get F of X, right? So that's the process, right? And we get semantic security. So, so you get the public key and encryption of zero, it's the same as encryption of one or any other values. And we have secret of security, which means that you get uh, uh, the public key, the encryption of the secret key, it's an indistinguishable from encryption of zero. Because that's what we need. Uh, and, and as I said, you know, secret security is needed in any way uh, and used. Okay, so, so, so what is the hash function family? So uh, the honest, you know, the, the, uh, the plain generation of the key uh, is going to be the following. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the key... Uh, 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 the, key, well, the, the, the key for the function is going to be the public key, which used here as a, as a homomorphic evaluation key, and uh, an encryption of two things, of the secret key and of some function g, which I'll talk about what it is in a minute. Okay? So in fact, I can say now that in the actual scheme, g is going to be the zero function. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, encryption of something, right? Since it's semantically secure, it doesn't matter. It's encryption of whatever. Uh, uh, so this is uh, this is the the key for the hash function. And how are you going to uh, uh, evaluate? So so uh, hk of x. So I'm going to evaluate h sub k. So I'm, I'm running the eval of the FHE uh, uh, on uh, uh, with the public key on. Uh, uh, on the ciphertext, and the function that I'm going to use is what I call here u sub x is universal circuit sub x, where u sub x is the following function. Uh, uh, u sub x is a function that uh, takes as input the secret key and the function g, and outputs g of the secret key of x. Why this particular way? You'll see in a minute. Okay, some 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 function, right? Uh, it is well defined, and uh, this and, and this is uh, this is the eval. Okay, uh, so you, you do it homomorphically. So what you get in the end, you get an encryption of 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 that, right? Which is encryption of G of S, S K of X and X. Uh, as I said, right now G is a zero function; it doesn't matter, right? So you get essentially here an encryption of zero, but never mind. Uh, so as I said, the honestly generated key G is zero, so you always get encryptions of zero. All your evaluations always give you encryptions of zero. Uh, uh, but in the statistical mode, what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose the key, uh, choose the, the G differently. It's no longer going to be the zero function. Now this G uh, of S, K, and X is going to be do the following. You take X. Uh, 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 you apply F to it, right? You apply F to it, and then you decrypt it with a secret key, and then you add one or something, just to make sure that it's different. Why does this make sense? Let's see what happens. So recall that right now, the, this is the G that we have. It's the, you take X, you apply F, you decrypt, you add one. So, and, and, and remember what the, the hash function does. Uh, uh, it takes eval of u sub x of, of, uh, 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 with ct. So what you get in the end is the encryption of, SK, of, of uh, g and sk of x, right? Uh, but g is this one, right? So what you get 
is uh, 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 so I claim this is good, but uh, but let's 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 see. So what you get here, what you get is uh, uh, okay. You, 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 but you, but let let's see what happens to the decryption of H of X, right? So so I, I computed H of X, and now I decrypted with a secret key, right? I know that what I got here is a, is an encryption of G, of G of S K of X. So if I decrypt it. I get g of n of s k of x, right? Which is this value. It's uh, it's uh, uh, it's a decryption of f of x plus one, right? So that means that uh, uh, h of x and f of x decrypt to different values, right? Because f of x decrypts to whatever value it is, which is dec the decryption of f of x, but g of x uh, uh, well, but, but sorry, H of X decrypts to whatever F of X uh, decrypted to plus one. So they, they decrypt to different values, right? And if H, if this value and this value decrypt to different values, then they cannot be the same value themselves. Then they have to be different. That means that H K of X is different than F of X. Right, so this is uh, maybe you know we can go over it uh, again, but uh, you can do it yourself. But, uh, but but this is the idea. Essentially, the idea is uh, you, you uh, uh, why is the, uh, uh, the, the this you know this hash function does not agree with f because you take this hash function if you decrypt it you get something that different than what you would get if you took f of x and decrypted it. You know, it doesn't mean that the decryption means anything, right? It's, there is two things that are not necessarily created in ciphertext. But never mind, because of the correctness of decryption, if two things decrypt to different values, they cannot be the same, right? Um, so anyway, so 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 this is it. Um, so what you can get from it um, is uh, you can get uh, uh, non-interactive zero knowledge from F, from, from FHE. Uh, uh, Again, uh, uh, you take you take the idea of uh, uh, of the correlation track of a function that, that I said earlier uh, that, that we just talked about now, and uh, um, and uh, so uh, okay and 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 uh, okay so this is what I said earlier before you can get uh, and non target knowledge from circular secure uh, uh, LWE or from uh, a circular secure FHE. Um, and, 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 and the idea is to take whatever we did and add to it, uh, apply it to a, a, a Sigma protocol, which actually has some trapdoor in the first message, right? So, so what are these trapdoor Sigma protocols? So uh, uh, you take, uh, again, remember there's, a, you have a CRS now. So let's actually take a protocol which is interactive. You also have a CRS. Why not? Because they have a CRS anyway in the end. Uh, so you have an alpha and a beta and a gamma. And the extra property is uh, uh, that, uh, well, so, so we have the special soundness, which, uh, uh, which we need, as that's in the Sigma protocols. That means that if X is not in the language, that means that for every first message, there's only a single challenge beta that for which there exists a gamma that makes the very first step, right? So that's the special soundness. And, and, and this comes in by the fact that that's why it's enough to have those relations which have which are uh, determined by a function, because all you need is to protect against one single challenge that will uh, kill you. So it's enough to talk about relations which have uh, only one uh, 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 bad y. Uh, and therefore, we, we, and furthermore, we need this uh, extra property that you can have it. Uh, uh, you can create the CRS uh, with a trapdoor such that it will allow you to make this alpha message, you know, can make you open both ways. Essentially, this alpha, if you remember in those protocols, you know, is a commitment to a graph, uh, uh, to the edges of a graph. If the commitment has a trapdoor and the CRS, then you can open it both ways using the trapdoor. Um, and uh, the way you're going to use it is that uh, the relation uh, uh, is going to use the relation, it's going to use the trapdoor, because the relation is also is going to be embedded, you know, there's going to be hash function in the CRS, uh, which is, uh, well, that's an example, but I don't think we want to go through that. I mean, whoever knows knows, whoever doesn't know, 
maybe too tired now so we can we can watch this later but uh, uh, the point is that uh, what you have in the CRS uh, you have uh, uh, again you have the uh, the trapdoor uh, uh, the single protocol and you, and you go to this uh, don't interactive argument and what you have here is uh, uh, this hash function that you send in the beginning um, but here is a second uh, no where okay sorry uh, uh, I think there's something messed up here in the slide. Let me actually describe it here. Um, so, so, as I was saying before, uh, all, but, all, the only thing that you need here is that in the CRS, uh, uh, you're going to put uh, uh, the trapdoor for, for whatever, for, for the first message with the commitment, and you're going to put the, uh, 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 now the, the, the hash function. Uh, and now the hash function in the plane model, it's going to be just the plane mode is going to be just uh, 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 if you remember, g is going to be zero. In the functional mode, uh, you're going to put there the function, which is uh, uh, you know for that particular x, so it doesn't even need to depend on x. Whatever function that uh, uh, that will make uh, will make it kind of simulated, simulatable for us, and the uh, and we're going to use the. Sorry, I, I mixed it up. So uh, there are two things to prove here. One is the uh, 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 one is the uh, the zero knowledge, and the other one is the soundness, right? So what I'm going to put here, I'm I'm going to for the soundness, what you're going to put here in the in the hash function in the reference string, you're going to put not the uh, the uh, the plain mode, you put the functional mode, uh, uh, the statistical mode, where the function is exactly the function that makes this uh, uh, this protocol sound the, the specific relation that will uh, 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 prevent the cheating adversary from cheating that's for the soundness um, and then for the uh, zero knowledge uh, you need to be able to simulate the whole thing so therefore what you put here you put in the crs uh, uh, you put the hash function and you actually use the trapdoor in order to compute uh, 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 whatever beta it is because you know how to compute the beta that is the one beta that is going to kill this alpha because you have uh, the trapdoor for the uh, for the alpha to actually compute this beta and this is why for normal time uh, 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 functions are good enough um, anyway so uh, never mind details uh, uh, but this is the idea um, okay um, So, okay, so, so following uh, uh, this, so actually there have been uh, a couple other results. Uh, so one result is that actually show that actually use the stronger version back to this optimal, uh, 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 optimal FHE. Uh, talked about, uh, actually used it to actually show that, uh, uh, that, that P part is actually hard, but there's another result of complexity theory that actually if you have super strong LWE, this optimal secure LWE, then that means that people, people is actually hard, which is a very uh, uh, unexpected relation, but, uh, 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 but here it is. And, uh, and again, you're doing a uh, uh, FHME for specific uh, protocol. Uh, another result, which is very nice, is actually taking whatever we did for uh, uh, this uh, 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 circular secure LWE, and actually notice that actually you don't need to assume secular security. If you actually talk about specific uh, uh, encryption schemes, uh, specific which is the regular scheme and the GSW uh, 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 homomorphic encryption, uh, fully homomorphic encryption scheme, and you actually talk about, look at the specific relation, the way those two relations interact, it's, it turns out you don't actually need the decryption key to be part of the, uh, uh, the of the public key of the function. You don't actually need to encrypt the decryption key. You actually it's enough to uh, 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 to uh, instead of the decryption key, you actually can not fully decrypt in the uh, in the proof. You can actually also only partially decrypt. Actually, you get something. You start with a ciphertext, which is a uh, 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 GSW ciphertext, and you partially encrypt it. And then you look at you look at it as if it is a decryption under the regular scheme, and you get the same properties. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so so and in the end of the end of the day, what you get uh, is a specific construction that is based just on plain LWE without any 
circularity, which is great. In particular, it means non-interactive zero knowledge and everything that we said based on just plain LWE. Um, so just to say, so, so the open questions. So, so the, the, I think there are tons of open questions here. Uh, um, you know, you could go unravel back, you know, from maybe from the end of the talk, going back to, uh, to the beginning. Uh, so, so, so one is, uh, uh, you know, core extractability, we, we have now LWE. But do we need LWE? Can we get core extractability from symmetric assumptions? Because all we need is a symmetric encryption scheme, which is, you know, KDM secure. So uh, LW was one way to get it, and you need some structure there. But does it really need structure? So back to Fiat engineering, you know, all you need is this, which is very strong. So can you actually formalize those properties in terms of, uh, of, of symmetric key primitives, uh, which are strong enough? You know, can you do it from one functions? In particular, can you do non interactive zero knowledge from one functions? Why not? Uh, it sounds like, you know, we grew up learning that non-interactive zero knowledge is a very structured assumption. You need trapped permutations, very precise, it's like, you know, top of the line stuff. But now with this fiasho metric, you can actually, you know, in the random worker model, you have NISEC un unconditional, right? So why cannot we do NISEC from one way functions? Uh, definitely any separation we not, cannot do in just plain random model. But, True, we can do separations from other things, but I don't know. So I think it's a challenge. Either kind of come up with a real separation, specific separation of NISIC from one of functions, or maybe a construction. I don't know. I, can, I can't even say what my conjecture is. <laughs> say it again? No, but that's true. So, yeah. So anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I conjecture that it should be able, I don't know, I don't know about conjecture, but it should, it should be able to, I think we should be able to do something from uh, symmetric primitives or, or we, maybe we learn something new in a way, you know, maybe there's something we don't know. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, one, one direction. Uh, um, in another direction, uh, so what about Fiat Shamir for succinct arguments? So we said we have one specific example for one specific succinct argument uh, uh, with very strong assumptions. Uh, 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 can we do more? Uh, in particular, what about starting with uh, succinct uh, arguments, interactive succinct arguments, and flattening them? In particular, you know the Killian classic uh, 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 PCP-based uh, uh, succinct argument, uh, uh, which is like uh, maybe uh, the basic one. Uh, can you do Fiat Shamir for that, right? So there is the, uh, you know, the Mikali CS proof, which are a little bit uh, like a Fiat Shamir for Kilian, but, uh, 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 but can we do that? So there are some, some, some near results in these directions, you know, cannot be done generically uh, uh, for any, you know, if you think about it, there's two different hash functions. Uh, 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 there's a, whatever, the, the hash function for the collision resistance of the Kilian and the one for the Fiat Shamir. Uh, those two hash functions cannot be independent because if you think of them as two independent functions, then there are separations, there are impossibility. A recent result, uh, uh, I forget the names, uh, uh, but maybe you can do them together. You can actually design those two functions together and get something. I think it's a, it's a promising direction. My bet is that it's possible, but we don't know yet how to do it. Uh, uh, I know. So, so this is. Uh, 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 another direction. Um, so, uh, so another direction is going back to the beginning of the talk and really going back to this understanding core extractability better for different relations, simple relations, more complicated relations, uh, 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 you know, single tongue, you know, a single input, output, uh, multiple input, output uh, to understand some, some theory there because those hash functions are playing a really strong uh, uh, role in our constructions and uh, uh, we should be able to understand them better. So, of, of course, it's always great to use SHA because it's fast or whatever, and then assume it's around the Merkle, but uh, 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 maybe we want to understand those things better. Uh, so, uh, uh, for instance, and, and so one thing is talk about specific relations. Another thing is talk about fine-tuning the advantages of the adversary, right? For, you know, talk about Bitcoin, you really care about 
concrete advantage, you know, that, that if, the, if somebody came up with a way to speed up search by 10% uh, because they found some, some weakness in, in SHA, like, a, a, like the ASICs stuff, uh, 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 that would be huge, right? So, so, uh, so you need, in order to protect against it, you know, theoretically, to give theoretical protection, you actually need to talk about more, much more fine-tuned notion of variant of correlation tractability. Uh, 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 no, you know, uh, talk about uh, specific uh, 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 run times or space or whatever you want to bound. So, uh, 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 so I think uh, that's another, another direction. Uh, and uh, uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Questions? I killed everybody. Sir, uh, I don't know whether this is a relevant question uh, to this particular context or not. Since you mentioned the concept of Bitcoin, I want to ask you, uh, what are the, your comments on uh, Bitcoin concept? What, what are the? the you, uh, what are your comments on uh, Bitcoin concept? So, in general, <laughs> or in philosophy, the, the, you know, so the, it's, the Bitcoin is a whole way of life, right? From uh, 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 from economic philosophy and the, about the meaning meaning of life to anything, uh, uh, so I, maybe I won't comment on that. But uh, but, uh, but 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 I think that the one thing that actually is important is uh, uh, actually uh, uh, maybe also goes back to uh, uh, to Apita's uh, 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 introduction is to is to understand what we're doing, and especially since uh, we're putting you know there is money here. And, and, and uh, there's real money, and there's more than just uh, money. There's social structure and social stability uh, uh, in the money that the money comes with. Uh, uh, we have to understand what we're doing. And since we're trying to build a whole new life or economy on crypto, uh, we have to understand the crypto, and we have to give really sound foundations. So one thing is this, right, is to... Uh, 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 so this, uh, 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 this random lottery or whatever thing that is at the base of, of the Bitcoin stability, we should understand it better. And, and, you know, and somehow, you know, dreaming up a function, hash function, say this is what it is and we hope it's going to work. It's, uh, 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 it's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, it's even irresponsible. Uh, but, uh, but, but it goes more than that. I mean, there's a whole structure of things above it and below it, and we have to understand how this works, and we have to, I think we must be able to build it up uh, uh, step by step and get some sound uh, understanding of what this thing gives and doesn't. That's... Thank you. Sir. Yeah. So, uh, you spoke about uh, specific, not, you just spoke about specific relations in between. So mm -hmm. do we know how to get uh, this co co correlation inter interactability for some specific relations, say, from other algebraic assumptions, not from LWE, uh, but uh, potentially other? No, so, so, so the one thing that is, is what I showed uh, based on uh, El Gamal, which is I uh, just assume that El Gamal is, uh, is optimally uh, uh, secure. But other than that, no. And I think it, it's a great question. And again, so it's, it's, it goes back to the question of, do we really need uh, 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 LWE or, or anything algebraic? Can we just do it for one function without any structure? I don't know. Uh, I just want to say that, that in that direction, so there are actually constructions of KDM secure functions from uh, 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 basic primitives, so SRAM generators, I think that we should have strong uh, hardness. And, uh, and they, they exist construction thing, but you've got Dodis and uh, Will Crop Chicken, a bunch of others. And uh, in fact, we were trying to take those constructions and, and try to see if we can use them and crank them up a bit and make the, you know, make the assumptions as much as we can and does it work. And, and, and it doesn't. Those, those constructions break at some point, which is less than exponential. It's and, and, you know, two to the n over half, they break. Uh, uh, so so, so there is, seems to be a gap there. If it's insurmount insurmountable or not, I don't know. But, yeah. uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I would just like to follow up to one of the other questions. 
you mentioned about uh, proof of work and Bitcoin uh, finding the uh, digits uh, number of zeros mm -hmm. proof of work. So do you think there are any other you know possible attacks that could be possible in the blockchain perspective if such kind of correlations between the input and output could be established? So, 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 so clearly, if you can, you can kind of break the uh, the relation, then uh, you could get advantage. Well, essentially, this is what the ASIC attack did, right? right. They they got this twenty percent, and they managed to get it faster than everybody else, right? right. So, 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 uh, I think this is uh, what you get. I mean, what are the the effects of that? You know, if somebody yeah. manages to uh, essentially somebody can control the 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 coin right and double spend and whatever thank you yeah any other question okay if not the man will okay thank you okay oh thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank okay. you